Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra for Sierra T Designs and today I have another video for visible image to share with you. So let's jump right in. So I'm going to create the background to start and I have a piece of watercolor cardstock there and I've just misted it with some clean clear water. And then I have three colors of sprays here. I have distress oxide spray in mustard seed and hickory smoke. And then I also am going to bring in a mica spray which is flickering candle. Of course you can't get flickering candle anymore. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was a release from Tim Holtz in uh, Halloween time. So I think he released it in September. Uh, so I don't believe it's available anymore, but it's just a beautiful spray and brings a lot of really pretty yellow colors. So I like to use it anytime I want a vibrant yellow in my background. So I did only do one layer of color. I loved how this turned out. So I ended up just heat setting it right away and I didn't end up adding more layers of color, which you of course could do. Um, that's totally up to you. I just, I really liked it and I knew that if if I had gone back in and added more color, I would have lost all of the white that I kind of have poking through some of the color in the background. So I ultimately chose to just do that one layer of color. And then I did bring in some texture paste. This is the um, opaque matte texture paste. And I have the really cool hex no, sorry. It's the Honeycomb Hex stencil by Visible Image. It's a brand new stencil I just brought out here a little bit ago, and it's a really neat stencil. So I thought that I would kind of use this to add a bit of a mixed media feel to my uh, honeybee card. I love bees and I love yellow and gray with bees. I don't know why it just always ends up being what I gravitate to because I love how it looks. So I do have a tendency to those colors, but I thought that this turned out pretty neat. And I do use a palette knife. It's easier for me to kind of choose where I want the paste to be with this thinner uh, palette knife. But of course you could put it on however you like. And again, I always go back to the rule of threes. So I do apply the paste in a few areas, three to be exact, uh, just because again, I prefer uh, the rule of threes. And my texture paste is getting a little dry. So it is a little bit difficult to spread here, but I, uh, I managed to make that work. And then of course the stencil and the palette knife went into uh, my warm sink full of water and soap just so they would be easy to clean off of the stencil later so then i brought in the honey bee or sorry <laughs> visible images be happy stamp set i want to name them things but that's not what they're called it's the uh be happy stamp set and it has several bees i chose three out of the stamp set that are all kind of the same there and i had a funny air pocket under my big bee and i was uh i well i knew i was going to color it so i just colored it in black i didn't pick a great color for it so you can kind of see it so I covered up with a little gem later but uh, I did uh, use some Copic colors so I used Memento to Tuxedo black ink and some hammer mill cardstock because those are Copic safe and for my yellowy orange body of the bee I used Y15, Y17 and YR15 so you kind of get a bit of a more orange-ish tone on the outside that was just because I like how that looks with the dark like the black body of the bee. Um, you could of course do a more yellow golden kind of color. I just, I happen to really like the orange tone. So that's kind of the direction I end up going. And I do like to lay down a full wash of my base color, which in this case was a Y15. Then I bring in my mid tone, which is the Y17. And then I come back in with my darkest tone, which is the YR15, and then go back through my colors. Uh, this just gives me a really good blend. And then I kind of like that you got that central highlight in the center, which I, I think looks really neat. And then for the wings to kind of differentium, differentiate them from the white card stuff. I brought in BG000 and RV000. This is only to add a very light, subtle color to the wings. I don't want them to be stark white. You could, of course, bring in grays and kind of get the same effect if you had brought in a very pale gray color. It just kind of adds a little bit of depth to the wings and a little bit of that kind of iridescent sheen is what I was thinking with it. Uh, I'll hold it up here so you can see both wings separately. It's very subtle, but it does add a little bit of extra something to the wings so that they're not just white cardstock. Uh, and then I did go over them with my clear, uh, this is the Spectrum Noir glitter pen and that's just again because I love everything to be sparkly and shiny so that's a preference for mine you don't need to do this it is for sure an extra step but I love 
how it looks. And I think that that actually adds a, as well to that kind of iridescent look in the wings. And then I did trim out my panel. I took off about a quarter of an inch on two sides. And then I'm going to bring in a mat for it. If you've been with my channel for a little while, you'll know that I love to mat things. I just like how it gives it a more finished look. And in this case, I chose a piece of cardstock for my stash. This is sunshine yellow. Uh, and I just trimmed it down to be out about an eighth of an inch smaller than my A2 base so that I kind of get this thin mat going around the card. And now, of course, you could absolutely have used black cardstock here. You could have used a gray cardstock here. I chose to bring in a yellow just because I have a fair amount of colored cardstock and I generally don't gravitate towards it. So I, I really want to kind of start using it for that bright, fun, colorful effect. So I did bring it in in this card specifically, and then I adhered it down with my Nouveau Deluxe glue which I'm also going to adhere down the card panel to the card base. And it's an A2 sized card, so it's a pretty standard size uh, for card bases. And then I'm just gonna use the same Nouveau Deluxe glue. I do bring in my Barely Art glue here in a little bit just because I have a tendency to mix my liquid glues, but I do greatly prefer liquid glue just because it gives me a little time to kind of arrange my uh, a panel how I want it. I, I I do eyeball things quite a bit, so it makes it a little easier for me to kind of line things up. And then I brought in my white gel pen. This is a size 10, I believe, nib. Uh, and I just added a little bit of white highlights to the little bees. They're hard to see here, but hopefully you'll see them when I hold up the card at the end of the video there. And this is honestly not completely necessary. I just like how it looks. So I do have a tendency to want to add a little bit of a white highlight onto uh, the images that I color. And I am going to fussy cut these out. There are not matching dies currently, but I don't have a problem fussy cutting things. So I just, I find that if you hold your scissors in your dominant hand for me of course that's my right hand uh, and then I don't move my scissors I just move the image with my non-dominant hand which is for me is the left hand so just a little tip on how to fussy cut if you struggle and of course I do cut off the excess so it's not in the way as I kind of go around these smaller details and, and if you see me um, pressing buttons uh, out of the screen there it's just because I watch my iPad while I craft and I usually I think I'm watching uh Christina Warner at the moment actually when I was doing this but <clears throat> I, I jumped through a whole bunch of really cool card makers so uh, I just I have to skip ads and stuff sometimes when I'm at the front there so yeah I just went around the full image leaving a small white border around the body of the bee I find this is easier and I like this look it kind of almost looks more like a sticker if that makes sense and it kind of helps the whatever your image happens to be, this is the B of course, but whatever your image happens to be to differentiate from the background. So I have a preference to leaving a white border and I find it easier to fussy cut my images when I do that. You don't need to do that. You could have of course cut it up closer, but I think the uh, smaller bits would have been a little bit more difficult to go around like the antennae, but you could absolutely do it. And then I did use some thin 3D foam squares on the back of my three Bs, and I kind of played around with the placement of them. I'm not going to add a sentiment to this card, uh, mostly just because I think that it could be for a few different things, and I didn't want to limit it to one thing. So, I mean, you could, of course, do anything. You could have a bee pun on there, like, you are beautiful, or, or you know, be you, be happy. Any, anything like that would totally work. Um, or I think it would be cool for just like a, hey, how are you doing card? Or I, I think that there are a lot of things this could be used for, and I didn't want to limit it by putting uh, sentiment on it. So I chose to leave it sentimentalist at this moment in time, but I, I will add one later. Uh, and then I did bring in just some, uh, these are little gems that I had in my stash. It was a freebie set of gems I got a while ago from Studio Katia. So I thought it really went well with this card. And then you can see here, I'm going to put a little gem on the big B's back where that black speck kind of was that it didn't quite fill in nicely. So I'm going to hold it up here now and hopefully you can kind of see that white highlight detail and I hope that you can see the iridescent kind of look to the wings. It is pretty subtle on the camera but in person you can really see it so it looks pretty neat. I'd love to know what you guys think of this card and I did put some scraps in the inside of the card as well. So that is the card I have for you guys today. I hope that you will consider leaving me a like, leaving me a comment and uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. I do new videos every Monday and Thursday. Thank you so much guys and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.